Welcome back to another episode of Exploring Whiskies. I'm Eric. I'm Kevin. And we are exploring whiskies from around the world. And today, first Glenn Levitt. We are going space side and like just kind of traditional. <laughs> I mean, this is one of the like key mark yep. space side scotches that, that exists. One of the, I, I haven't totally confirmed <laughs> this one. So I don't know if it's still true, but in doing like checking some things out, one of the best selling scotches, single malt scotches single malt. in America and like number two, two in, the, in world. the world. It's kind of impressive. No, single malt scotch always has that. I don't know. People, every time they think of scotches, they always think of those Smokies and the Peaties and the Brinies. And, and, and I don't, yeah, this is not going to be that. Um, everything, everything I understand is any kind of a space side. Uh, there may be a little bit of an oak note to it, but almost always sweet, floral, honey, fruity, yep. all those kind of notes. Just wonderful light drinker. That's kind of what I'm expecting out of this. I think uh, out of the other Glen Levis I've tried, that's pretty standard. Yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't have the 12. This is your bottle. I have the 14, and I know, we, I think we've got a handful of other ones too, but. Thank you. Yes, sir. Obviously, colors light, pretty normal for any kind of scotch. It's light on the nose. You get a vanilla right away. Okay. Yeah, there's a little vanilla. There's a sweetness. There's a little malty. There's a malty kind of maybe a, not a. It's not a funk necessarily, but there's a maltiness to it. Like you, could, it's coming through with a little bit of a, a malt note to it. So it kind of dries out the mouth. Is it? Yeah. It's one of those. <clears throat> That's usually the heavy oak. That's what I've found. The heavy oak ones are the ones that really dry out the mouth. Vanilla, vanilla and even on the taste and a lot of honey. No burn whatsoever. No. Well, it's it's the we're going back to the traditional here. It is 80, 80, 80 proof. proof. Yeah. So the 12 year. It's a very ooh, smooth drinker. I just got like a candy sweetness at the end. Uh, like. Yeah. What is that? Oh, that, that's going to bother me if I don't get that. <laughs> but there's a like a really sweet candy note at the very end of it. Fruity candy note. Like, uh, like gummies type thing. Like gummy bears mm -hmm. type of a, of a note. I like gummy bears. <laughs> <laughs> and just a touch of maybe like an oak yeah. tannin at the very... Like it's just back there yeah, in the back of your woody, throat. Woody. Yeah, a little bit of an oakness. But that's really no smoke, obviously. No. I mean, we've we've had we've had enough space sides at this point that <laughs> no, they're not. You're not going to get a smoky note to it. No. Nine times out of ten, nice. It's yeah, just nice, sweet. This is a very very floral, easy, soft, easy drinker, and not the notes like I think easy drinker for bourbons and whiskeys and stuff like that. And I think all right, it doesn't. You know, it's got the. It's just a different, it's very different. These are so much lighter when you get into the space sides, especially at the 80 proof. They're so much lighter and just, I'd be surprised with like, there's no need for ice cubes. Oh, no. Uh, I, I don't know how you mix this. Uh, I'm sure it would mix fine, but. I've seen recipes with scotch, you, a little bit of a ginger ale or like a ginger beer okay. <clears throat> on the rocks. Um, I have not had a scotch yet where I felt like I needed a cube. I much prefer them just in a in a Glencairn. Yeah, I, I or in a rocks glass, but obviously no rocks. Yeah, I, I just yeah, I don't. There's not many. There's not many that I think really need any kind of a watering down. They're they're usually in that eighty to uh, you know, maybe like eighty six is yeah. tends to be the range. The proof Every is, once in a while, the pops proof in the nineties. Even with a bourbon for me, I mean, it's got to be closer to that 100-ish before I feel like I probably would need a cube. But or that the cube would actually mellow it, it out up. and make it better. Yeah. yeah. I would agree. Yep. So good and love it. Um, been around a very long time. 1824, I believe, is maybe 22, 24. Somewhere's in that range. Um, and they've got quite a few bottles. They have a huge range of, of different uh, variations, ages, what they, you know, did a barrel casking in. Uh, these are 
This the the baseline is X bourbon and X cherry. cherry. I know there's a Caribbean rum version. Mm -hmm. there, there's just a whole bunch of crazy things double that they've oak. done. I've got one at home. It's double oak. Yep. Yeah. So um, the fun part, d doing some quick little research, uh, when they first started their distillery, so I think it was 1822, they were, uh, it was technically an illegal distillery. Mm -hmm. The whole region was kind of like illegal distilleries, uh, but they started to develop a name for the quality of what they're putting out. And to the point where, now I can't remember which king it was, but one of the queen, kings of England actually came over and asked for a dram. <laughs> so uh, that started to give them the idea that maybe we should go legit. Mm -hmm. Some of the laws had changed. They went and uh, applied for a license to become a like a legitimate distillery. And, but nobody else in that area did. So he uh, got threatened they were going to burn down the distillery they were going to like he was going to be inside it so he used to walk around with two pistols <laughs> all the time because he was you know getting threatened and then it they just went on and on with so that was kind of their beginnings were a little sketchy <laughs> but their whiskey he figured it out though pretty solid well that's what happens when you've been doing it for almost 200 years now mm -hmm. there's a number of other bottles that we'll get to the sample in the show which yeah is, which is gonna love it yeah that they, they have and even better the price tag this is a high 20s yeah maybe 30 dollar bottle very accessible bottle very yeah easy to find huge distribution solid pricing and i feel like they've got a handful of bottles that are in that range that high 20s to 40 ish yeah, i agree yeah very, very reasonably priced and to be able to try I don't know. There's probably what four or five bottles in that in range. That line. Yeah, I would. Yeah, yeah I agree. I, I think there's there's really good baseline, and then yeah, they they do just like the other yeah. scotches. They have the the thirty year or the <laughs> you know all the fanciness that you can get into with a lot of the scotches. But it is quintessential space side whiskey, scotch. Uh, the twelve years, you know, yeah, it it doesn't come across that way. Not sure if there's a coloring added in, in this one, but um, doesn't, I mean, if there is, it's not much. Not much. <laughs> Very small, small amount. But I think this is a solid beginner whiskey. I, I think we've said that for almost all the Space Side and Highland whiskeys that we've sampled. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a good intro and it's not going to be, it's a good one to introduce to people that have that thought that it's going to be smoky or briny that, yeah. or I don't like scotch type stuff so yeah if you got reservations this is absolutely one of the bottles you should try first in my opinion yeah as long as you like the smell and the taste of vanilla honey fruit maybe a little floralness mm -hmm. with a little bit of oak at the very end they got you covered that that's that's what those notes are and I, there's not one of those notes that I don't enjoy in my whiskey. So, <laughs> so that's, that's all very solid as far as I'm concerned for a scotch. Overall, I think it's a great buy. It's a great intro. And if you're at all looking to explore outside of whatever your traditional drinker is, this is a, this is a good intro into that space I region. But no, uh, like again, this is our first Glen Levitt for the show. There's obviously many, many more to go. Uh, if you've got a favorite favorite one, we'd love to hear your your take on it and the the age the and we'd love to track it down and yeah. do an episode on it. Absolutely. But the uh, again, I've enjoyed this bottle. There isn't a Glen Levitt bottle I haven't enjoyed. To be honest with you, though. I've had ones that I enjoy more, more or <laughs> less, but I agree. Never had one that I was just like, ooh, that's <laughs> rough. So. Well, we appreciate everyone joining this episode on the uh, Glenn Levitt 12 year. If you like this, we encourage you to hit the like button at the bottom of the screen. You subscribe to the channel. You can hit the bell icon. And again, leave a comment. Have you ever had the Glenn Levitt or anything else in the Glenn Levitt line? Uh, or, hey, if we convince you to give it a shot, drop us a note and let yep. us know. We, uh, we uh, love we to hear. Appreciate sharing the joy. <laughs> so, thanks again for joining. We'll see you on the next episode. Thanks for watching. Cheers. Cheers.